Okay, Aquaman. This was done very well. I will say this was incredibly visually, visually very impressive. Once it into the underwater aspects, it actually looked good. When they showed Atlantis, and it was this burst of all these multiple colors and moving things and undulating waves and things like manta rays and the, like the lionfish sort of crafts that they were moving with and the way things moved and flowed, it looked incredible. This film must have been beautiful to have seen in 3D. Beautiful with that, with that, uh, with the illusion of depth thrown into this. This must have been just amazing. Jason Momoa, he's not the world's greatest actor, but he brings enough physical charisma and swagger to a role that he makes it work. It's kind of like The Rock. You've seen a lot of Jason Momoa films, you've kind of seen him play a very similar character in all of them, but he does it well. And this one, it's weird seeing kind of like a cool. Aquaman with some swagger to him. But, you know, with Nicole Kidwin as his, as his mom and Django Fett as his dad. Yes, I went there. And I was like, man, this is really good. I like seeing Dolph Lundgren as another one of the kings. The stuff that they're able to have you view that makes sense... But when you say it out loud, it sounds crazy. There's a battle sequence that you're going to see that's going to have Dolph Lundgren riding a seahorse. Shooting lasers at lobster crab people. And you're going to go, this actually makes sense. I love the fact they brought in the trench. I know James Wan, who's known for a lot of his horror film work, has mentioned he wants to do a spin-off film of just the trench which would work really well. I thought James Lundgren did a very good job. I thought that they worked very well when it came to the characters that they have. In Black Mantis, I got a good amount of backstory for being a one, one of the villains. But Ocean Master owns, owns this film. Great job. Like the build-up for that. Willem Dafoe, fantastic supporting character. Same with Nicole Kidman, Amber Heard. They picked the right people who you can tell were having fun while doing this, which made the film nice and fun. I also really enjoyed the fact they throw in I wouldn't say Indiana Jones is more like a Tomb Raider segment where they have to find an item. It's one of those, oh go go from set piece A to set piece B because that item you found A is used to B. Well, B tells you about C. B to C. Well, C takes you to D. What they did with made it really work is they throw in small action sequences to break it up. So if you want to view it, either there's action sequences broken up by exposition, or exposition sections broken up with you know just the right amount of action sequences. And I'm still amazed that the easy characters, Batman, and Superman, Warner Brothers now has a really hard time trying to do. But a female character who, dependent upon origin, is clay animated by the power of Zeus, or is the daughter of Zeus, raised on an island of women warriors, who then fights in World War II, was easy to do and made sense. A man who his mother is a mermaid queen, and his father is a lighthouse operator who talks to fish, and his super speed strength and then goes underwater for a large portion of the film and it makes and it seems to make sense that it's easy and it flows well I don't know it doesn't make sense you take the characters that are easy to understand that are fully established and they don't work you take the characters that are barely established and Aquaman is sort of laughing stock for a very long time and you make a character where it, it works. And it feels just different enough in the superhero genre that it felt relatively refreshing. How come they couldn't do this with Green Lantern? 